Welcome to Highline Excel class number 11. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook week two, business 214. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about logic, true false formulas, is functions, and if functions. First, though, we need to uh, look at a list of what can go into a cell, because that'll this will help us with logic. So certainly we could type a word that's considered text, a number that's considered a number. But if you type the word true, notice uh, text is aligned to the left, numbers to the right. But when you type true or false, it's automatically capitalized and centered. Those are different than these two. This is considered a logical value. You can also have an error. So if I take a 100. I'm sorry, equals this cell right here divided by 0. And uh, there's a, a number of different kinds of errors. But that means a divide by error. So these are all uh, some of the things that can go into a cell. Now we want to talk about the comparative operators. So comparative operators like equal, this is not, that's a less than and then a greater than symbol one after the other. That's not equal to greater than. Greater than or equal to, you have to put two characters. There's no single symbol like in math. A less than and a less than and equal. Now we want to ask these questions. Is 15, uh, is 15 equal to 15? Is 15 not equal to 15? Is 15 greater than 15, et cetera? We want to ask all these questions and use these operators. This is a logical true-false formula. Equals is this cell equal to this cell. Enter, and that's why logical formulas are so good because they don't get tricked by formatting. We just got tricked by formatting. If you highlight this whole column and increase the decimals, I have mine right here, otherwise on the home, ah, you can see that this formula is saying, is this equal to this? And the answer is false. That um, formula didn't get tricked by formatting like we did when we used our eyes. Now let's do another formula equals is this one not less than greater than that not. There's also a not function. But for us we're just doing the operators. Very useful to have these operators for logical formulas. How about um, is this one greater than this one? So if it's equal to it would be false. So watch this, false. Now watch this, I'm going to type uh, 15 here. I'm actually going to put highlight all these, type 15, and then enter. So now, is 15 greater than 15? The answer is false. Now what about greater than or equal to? Equals, is that greater than or equal to that? Now the answer has to be true, right? And if we change this to 10, the answer would be false. If I change it to 100, the answer would be true. So it's checking greater than or equal to. Again, 15, it's still true because it's equal to. Now, less than is 15 less than this 15. False. And finally, is equals. Is that cell less than or equal to two symbols typed right one right after the other? Is that less than or equal to that? The answer is yes, because it's equal to. So those are operators. Now, um, oh, I have a fence up there, so I'm going to increase the uh, column width there. Now, all of these logical, these are all logical tests, but we were testing just one thing. Sometimes you want to test more than one thing. For example, we have a customer. Their credit rating is 3 at a particular credit rating agency. The uh, customer last year sales. Well, Double click all these. Customer last year sales. The customer's last year sale were 500,000. And our company has a credit score hurdle, which means we don't extend credit unless they have three or greater credit rating. And the company's last year sales have, have to be more than $1 million. Those are our two criteria um, when extending credit. So if we want to check two things at once, we could simply just do two formulas in two different cells. But we sometimes that's not convenient to do. And so there's an AND function. An AND function tests 
two up to 255 logical tests. And it, the AND function will deliver a true to the cell only when all of the logical tests come out true. So let's try it. Equals, equals AND. And you see it just wants the logical test, just like we were doing a moment ago. And then separate it by a comma. And then you can put as many logical tests as you want. So the first one is, um, here's the customer, right? So we say, is their score greater than or equal to our hurdle? That's logical test one, number one. Comma, and then logical test number two, are their sales greater than or equal to our hurdle? So both of these logical tests, the customer's data has to e either equal or exceed our hurdles. Close parentheses. Now control enter. Now I want to go up to formula evaluator and evaluate that. In earlier versions, it's under the tools menu. And now you can watch it. Click Evaluate. It says it's 3 greater than or equal to 3. True uh, is 500,000 greater than or equal to 100,000. False. And so because these are not both true, and says <coughs> false. <coughs> and only works when every single logical test is met. Now in other situations, um, uh, maybe we have a different rule. So rule number one there, here, here's a, a different rule, right? Rule number two. We don't care which one of them is met, but one of those two have to be met. And that's when you use OR. So again, like the AND formula we did here, we have two logical tests. But only one of them has to be true for the OR to deliver a true to the cell. Equals OR, and we do our same two tests. I can't quite fit on the screen. There we go. Equals, nope. I'm going to click right here and then uh, maybe do 98. OK, so there we go. Equals OR. The first test is, hey, is the customer's credit rating greater than or equal to our hurdle? And then comma, uh, are their sales from last year greater than or equal to our hurdle? Now this is an or, so either this one or that one or both can come out. So this could be true and this false. This could be true, this false, or both of them are true. And or would deliver a true to the cell. I'm going to go to Formula Evaluator. You can see here I click Evaluate. That first one is true. The second one is false. And so or doesn't care. As long as one of them, amongst however many you have in there, comes out true, then the or delivers a true to the cell. Now, it's not just to the cell. You can use these uh, logical tests, including the, the single ones above are AND and OR in other formulas. <clears throat> now, here's, we're still doing logical formulas. It's very convenient. Um, Excel has a bunch of built-in functions. Is text, is number, is logical. Remember, te uh, words, numbers, logical is true or false. Is blank. Is error. <clears throat> now, is error, I have a list over here. There's one, two, there's a, a bunch of different kinds of error, is error functions. And the is error checks for all the different types of errors. NA is not available. Value means your formula has something wrong, like uh, a, a um, an operator, like multiplication or division or something that doesn't belong, or an argument in a function that it doesn't isn't correct. Reference means this, like for example, a cell reference has been deleted and your formula was looking at that deleted cell. Divide by zero. Number, uh, there's a, a problem with your number, like it's too big or something, or too small, which has to be really big. <coughs> Name, meaning Excel doesn't know what word you have in a formula. And null means there's no intersection. So. This is error checks for all of them. Is ERR checks for everything except NA. And that's useful sometimes because lookup functions deliver NA. And sometimes you want to know when something's not available. There's an is NA too, which is just is it an NA error. And then there is a function called is non text. Let's try it. <coughs> Equals is text. And the, we're, I'm going to see if that is text right there. Close parentheses. Oh, yeah, it just delivers true and false. I'm going to copy it down. So for this one, it says, is it text? 
No, the answer is false. Now, is number? Is number? Is that a number? The answer is going to be true there, but when we copy it down one, it's looking there, and that is false. Now, what about is logical? Equals is logical. Is that a logical reference? Yes. So it's going to say true. Is blank? Is that blank? That's a very important one. There's other ways to test for it, but that's a great built-in one. <coughs> um, is, this is going to be the is error. Equals is error. And I'm going to double click this one right here. You can see when you, if you, if you forget, it gives you a, a screen tip in 2007 right off the bat. This one doesn't have the NA, but when I click down here, this one tells me that um, all of them, including NA. So I'm going to select that one. Yeah, that's an error. Uh, is error checks everything except for NA. So we're going to do equals is this first one right here. And because it's an NA, it's this this particular is function is doesn't care about NA. So it, it will say, is it an error except for NA? And the answer is false, because it's not an error, because NA isn't considered an error for is error. Is NA? That just is for if you're only checking for NA. And again, that's important because VLOOKUP functions return, or lookup functions, which we talked about a little bit in this class, and later in this class we'll talk about all the different lookup functions. Uh, NA is important because it means it's not, we didn't find it. So equals is NA. Is that an NA? And of course it's going to say true. Now is non-text. That checks for everything that's non-text. So it could be a number, an error, a true, false. So equals is non-text. Is that non-text? Well, that is text, so this will come out false. Now, <clears throat> all of this stuff up here, the is functions, and, or, and these logical tests here, very important for lots of different types of formulas. But probably the most important one is the if function. So we're going to talk about the if function now. The if function could put one of two things into a cell or into a formula. The if function has three parts. It has a logical test, which is what we've been talking about this whole uh, time here. Logical test, and then value of true, value of false. Now, we're just going to give it a logical test. And then instead of just having the logical test come out to true or false, the if function is really polite. It'll let you put something besides true, anything you want, a word, a number, a formula. And instead of false, it'll allow you to put something else. So. These two elements of the if function are just, it's, the if function is like much more polite than a regular logical formula, because you can put other stuff besides true and false. Numbers, text, formulas, or even cell ranges. All right, let's try it here. Now, I'm, I want to find out, this, so we have this huge list or something, you know, and we, we need in a separate column, we need to have a column that says when it's text and when it's a number. Now, we could just use our is, right, equals is number, or is text, and then double click and send it down. But that's not what we want. This column requires you put the word text or the word number into the cell. So I'm going to delete all that. And this is where you use the if, equals if. And there it is, one, two, three arguments. And the screen tip's pretty polite. It says, hey, give me one of those logical tests we just uh, did a bunch of them. Could be the is, the comparatives. Then it's very polite. It says, hey, you can put something in the cell if it's true, something if it's false. So let's do this. Let's do, um, we need to put either, either te text or number. So we'll do is text for the logical test and click here. Close. Notice the screen tip changes when you're inside a different function. As soon as I type that, it goes back to the, the if function. So there's our logical test. And as we know, that's true or false. Well, if it is text, what, what do we want in this cell right here? Value of true? Oh, the word text. And you got to put words in quotes, double quote, double quote. Otherwise, what if it's false? If this is text says false, right, because it's not a word, we want to put number. And we have in this column only this column here, we only have numbers and text. So this uh, if formula will work just fine. Control Enter. 
and then double click and send it down. Now, I want to do that same formula again, but notice here we use is text, and there's always lots of ways to build logical tests. So here's another example. We're doing the if, right? Three things it wants the logical test, and instead of is text, we're going to do is number. Is this a number? Now, it's kind of like reversed of what we did here, right? Because now the logical test is, is it a number? We're going to type a comma, and now it says the if function says, hey, what do you want in the cell if it's true? Well, if that is number says it's a number, then we want the word number. And if it's false, which means it's not a number, we want text. The word text in double quotes. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Hey, wait a second. It gave me the same answers? Oh, yeah, yeah, same answers. And either formula is just as good. This is a very important example in Excel because there are oftentimes multiple solutions for problems. Sometimes there are solutions that are just much better. They're, they're shorter to type in. They're faster calculating. But in this case, you know, th those are pretty equivalent. So either one you want. That's an example of the if function and how awesome the if function is, is cause, because we're not limited to just true and false in a cell. All right, uh, here's another example. Up here we put two numbers, one either the word uh, text or, I'm sorry, two text strings or words, either the word text or number. Here we want to put two numbers. You either get a bonus of $200 or you get 0. So here we're going to put either the number 200 or the number 0 in the cell. Here's your sales for the month, OK? $90,000. Wow, you had a tremendous month. And the question is, do you get the bonus? Do you get the bonus? Man, I hope you get the bonus. <clears throat> do you get a bonus? You get bonus if you sell $60,000 or more. Notice when they say the, the 60000 or more, 60000 is included. So here's our formula. Equals if, oh, and here's our, we get to do our logical test. And instead of just having a true or false in the cell, we're going to put numbers. So our logical test is going to be, are our sales greater than or equal to the bonus hurdle? Man, we, we, we went way above this month. Um, so the answer for us is going to be true. Ah, but look, this is a logical test. If your sales are greater, what do you get? What is, what is the value that we want in the cell if true? Yeah, the 200, so I'm going to click on that cell reference. Otherwise, and I'm going to put a comma, the thing that we put in the cell if it's false, so the test is your sales greater than the hurdle, right? Greater than or equal to. If your sales aren't greater than or equal to, then you want a 0. So we're putting either the result from that cell B65 or 0. Close parentheses, and that is an if. Logical test, the true value, the false value, enter. Now let's change your sales. You only sold 5,000. Oh, 0. Now what if you sold 6,000? Oh, right. Why 6,000? Because that equal sign right there. So that's um, an if function. This is an if function. Uh, that put one of two numbers in the cell. Now, <clears throat> we want to put here, I want to do another uh, formula that, like the first one we did, puts one of two words. And the way it works is for an income statement, uh, you have revenues and expenses. Let's just do a formula here, equals revenue minus expenses. Uh-oh, we have a loss. So what I'd like to do is when there's a loss, I want the, the name net, ink, net loss to come up. And if there's a, net, um, a profit, meaning revenues are greater than expenses, then I want the word net income to pop up. So our if, one of two things going into a cell with a logical test, that means if. And the logical test is going to be, hey, are revenues greater than or equal to expenses? If that's true, notice. Right now, they're not, it's not true. It's false. But if revenues are greater than, then we want the words in double quotes, net income. By the way, being a ter terrible speller, um, if you misspell a word in double quotes in a formula, spell check will not catch it unless you do it 
while you're in edit mode. I'm in edit mode. I'm going to go up to review and spell. And there you go. Only when you're in edit mode, though. So I'm going to double click that and then click OK. OK, comma, and then so that's what to put in the cell if true. The value, if false, is going to be in quotes net loss. Oh, bummer, net loss. All right, so now we have a uh, formula there. It's a label for our income statement. Now let's try it. Let's make the uh, revenues 9,000. Sure enough, it comes net income. Let's do them 6,000. Exactly on. By the way, here it is, important. When you do a um, test like this, it has a comparative operator. There are three things you need to test. You need to test way above. So here's the, the number. I'm going to make one much bigger than expenses, so 9,000, right? Oh, OK, net income. Then you have to test exactly right on, exactly right on. The label's still working. And then you got to test below. So since we have a hurdle, which means uh, revenue is greater than expenses, you got to check when revenues are way bigger than expenses, right on the nose, exactly equal to, and below. And all three times our label is working, so we've checked it. It works. Now, uh, this doesn't work here in accounting. You're not supposed to have negative numbers because the words indicate that this is supposed to be negative over here. So we actually need to put an if formula here. And using the if function that puts one of two for, uh, calculating formulas in. Now, if we had this situation by hand, we are not allowed to subtract revenues from ex, uh, take revenues minus expenses. We're supposed to go expenses minus revenue so that it shows as a positive here and the word here indicates that it's negative. So notice that formula is expenses minus revenues. I'm going to control Z. And the one we had before was revenues minus expenses. So there's two different formulas that we want here um, given a logical test. So here it is. We're going to use the if function equals if. If revenues are greater than or equal to whoop, expenses, then what do we want? Then we want revenues minus expenses. So the value if true is a formula, comma, if this is false, which means revenues, in our case, just as they are now, way smaller, right? Because the equal's there. It'll do this calculation whether it's above or equal. But if it's not, if this is much smaller, then we want to do the reverse, not, not the B69 minus B70, the reverse. So we take the expenses minus the revenues, close parentheses. And that's a very important, powerful element of Excel is being able to have two different types of formulas given some uh, logical test. Now let's test it, our a little cool little income statement here. We're going to test it way above, 9,000. Exactly right, it shows up as a positive. Right on the number, and the, the label too, by the way, is correct. Right on the number, label is correct, the number is correct, and finally below. Beautiful, amazing. So one of two words here, one of two formulas here, one of two numbers here, all with the if function. Now, uh, one last uh, thing about logical formulas, conditional formatting. I'm going to click in this cell, and I'd like to do something fancy. I'd like to have this cell show up in red when it's a loss and green when it is uh, a profit. Now, I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to choose a different uh, green. I'm going to click this More Colors, maybe this one right here. So there it is. Um, it's green. And now let's change this, 9,000. Oh yeah, it's still green, but I want it to change. When I have revenues less than expenses right there, I want it to turn to red. It's conditional formatting. And guess what? Um, it's just we can do our conditional formatting the same way as our if uh, the same logical test we did for our two formulas and the same logical test we did for our two words. But we're going to use conditional format. In 2007, it's in the ribbon. So you go up to Home, over here to Styles, and then Conditional Formatting, and then down here to New Rule. In 2003, it's under the Format menu, Conditional Formatting. So we get to this list, and we want to use a formula. Now, there's lots of other built-in features for conditional formatting, but I never use them. And the reason why is if you know how to do logical formulas, you can do any kind of 
conditional formatting. You're not limited to the built-in features they have. Now, there's actually some cool built-in features that we'll briefly look at later in this class. But this is the real power, knowing how to do true-false formats. Now, if you're in an earlier version, 2003, you have to use the first text box in the dialog window and, it's, and point to is formula. Now, here's our formula. I'm going to say, scoot this, actually, watch this. I'm going to scoot this down, boop, collapse. I'm going to say our, because we want it uh, colored red when expenses are less than, so I'm going to click there. Less than, notice how this is right here, less than this. Then I'm going to uncollapse. I'm going to come over here and select format. I'm going to select uh, fill, which used to say patterns. And I want red, so we're in the red. And then I'm going to go to font. I'm going to select font color white. Click OK, click OK. Hey, what happened there? That did not work. That did not apply what we want. Our um, expenses, we said, are these less than that. That's the wrong test. Now, let's go ahead and just see this. Ah, that's not what we want. So we did it backwards. So that we're seeing here that you, you always have to test, because sometimes when you build your formulas there, uh, you know, you're thinking backwards, which we I was thinking backwards there. So I'm going to click in the cell and go back to the um, formatting. Manage rules. I don't think you can see this at the bottom here. Let me go to the home, styles. Uh, conditional formatting down here. In earlier versions, you just go back to your same uh, format cells, uh, conditional formatting uh, dialog box. So here it is, manage, and then we can click here and click edit. Uh, we didn't want, is this one less than? We wanted, is this one greater than? So we're simply going to change it around here and click OK. And you know, when you do lots of logical formulas like this, you know, you're doing them all the time. You do make mistakes. It is important to test, find that there's a problem, and come back and change it. Click OK. Click OK. OK, so now it's green there. Now let's make this less than. And sure enough, it pops up red. So there it is. Uh, that's a lot about logical formulas, some is functions, some if functions, and even a little conditional formatting, all based on logic. All right, see you next video.